AI skin is super annoying, and while autoregressive models are getting better at it, there's always going to be room for improvement. And I didn't want to pay for the options out there to skin refine, as those tend to have their own room for improvement as well, so I set out to make the best skin refiner workflow on the internet, and I might have done it. Just ask Bob. Keep in mind, I'm talking all local. If you have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, it's gonna run on your PC. We're covering two, but basically one workflow today, showing off our latest skin refiner with upscaling. This workflow is gonna be available to our Patreon members or for individual purchase, but if you're here, odds are you're already paying for enough subscriptions, so we've tried to make it cost effective. We'll also compare the results from this workflow to our original workflow that we talked about a couple weeks ago, and you're definitely gonna see the difference. One thing I will say is that this is skin refiner and upscaling specifically, we do have a workflow with skin enhancement, but that's not going to be coming as a workflow, it'll be coming as a platform. It has everything we're going to talk about today, as well as some more kind of bells and whistles to tackle some of the overbaking issues that platforms like Enhancer might have. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So this should be pretty simple. It takes a lot from our previous workflow. You still have your face parsing toggles here. So if you want to keep anything consistent, you can go ahead and do that here. For example, in this case, eyes, upper lip, lower lip, cloth, and you'll see the impact of your selection here in just a second as we go through our generations. So you've got your load image here. So this is kind of our base. This was generated with mid journey. And so basically what we'll do right out of the gate is generate an overlaid skin layer. So as you can see, we kind of bring out some of these pores, get some of this additional detail out. And here's a comparison between the original image and then the new skin refined overlay image. And see, this is where a lot of people tend to stop. But you can go much deeper than this. For example, if you wanted to keep things consistent, we overlay the eyes, basically your selection from all the way back here, back onto the image to keep basically just the skin while maintaining the critical features. And this is kind of what I mean. So for this character, her nose is pretty small. So in this particular selection, it probably would have made sense to select her nose as well. As you can see, it's kind of made a little bit larger here. Same maybe with the eyebrows. I mean, it does a pretty good job. And usually I've noticed with this workflow, the eyebrows do tend to be fine. They don't tend to move or anything like that. But just something to keep in mind that if the generation doesn't come out exactly consistent, you might just want to mess with your selection settings. After that, we run the image through a face detailer, so you can see the result of that here. Again, we'll compare it with the original image. Um, as you can see, your selection, again, the nose changes, the eyebrows shift a little bit, but the eyes and mouth and lips remain completely the same, just like you had selected. I think what's really interesting to look at here is the hairline as well, right? Does a pretty good job of that. You'll notice this mole down here. Obviously, when we talk about refinement and consistency, you want to make sure that you're keeping as many of the critical details as possible, right? Then we'll pass it to our first upscaling layer and you can see we're starting to really bring out some of that detail. Here's that comparison. And then finally we have our last upscaling um, pass and this is kind of the end of the workflow. So as you can see, pretty phenomenal result. And there's obviously a lot of adjustment that you can make to this too, your level of detail and such. And you might be saying, well, how is this different than the original workflow you showed us just a couple weeks ago? Well, let's take a look at the results. So I'll give you one more good look at this image here from our new workflow. Then we'll switch over to the um, original workflow that we had talked about. And when we look at this result, I fixed a lot of these problems that we had in the existing workflow. For example, while we do add detail back, you can see it becomes really scaly and really baked. Um, and maybe, for example, in this particular situation, the eyes still need just a little bit more improvement, but you can see we're not seeing nearly the same, you know, issues, right? So way smoother, way cleaner, um, way more usable. As well, if we zoom back out and look at the hair here, for example, we can see we have this weird pattern forming. That's something that I've also been able to get rid of. So overall, this new workflow is going to be much more dynamic, much more um, reliable when it comes to consistently fixing your character's skin. And obviously, in this case, this is a pretty decent starting image. There's a lot of information to work with here, but this is also going to work with really poor generations that have really flat skin, for example. 
and on the flip side it also does pretty good job at adding detail to images with already existing detail. Hey everybody, Nick from the next day here and I actually have a little bonus to add for you guys. So this is something that you might have seen around, it's a little theory we had with the new auto regressive models out there like GPT-40, Gemini, etc. Basically the concept is instead of creating LoRa's you create brand new images using a single reference of your character. And this is something that's been kind of going around so we wanted to integrate it into this workflow. And basically the only difference is literally one node so you don't technically need two workflows but if you're getting this from our Patreon you're gonna get both. But you'd literally just need to plug in this Gemini Flash 2.0 node. That's it. And the results are pretty good. Definitely not perfect. I think once we get our hands on Flux Context in here it's gonna be a lot different. But again this is kind of just like a beta a test but i've seen some pretty good results from it and once you run through the workflow you can see with the upscaling you know the result is pretty good not great and this is just kind of an inherent problem with gemini unfortunately and that's kind of why i say context would be better here you can see the cigarette kind of gets messed up a little bit little weird noise here so i'd say like one out of five images that Gemini produces is going to be good. So instead of just having it run through the workflow every time, you could just run it, preview your image, and cancel, or move forward with that image if you want. But yeah, this is just a little bonus that I wanted to add for you guys that you will get if you're getting the workflow from our Patreon. And again, coming back to the masking idea, you can see here I left out earring, which is why it gets adjusted and kind of turns a little funky. But if I were to come back here to our selection and select ear, R, earring, we wouldn't see that problem. Again, both workflows are available on our Patreon, and while we're not showing how the workflow actually works here, all the instructions on adapting your masks, making sure everything is right, adapting detail in your generation, all that information is going to be on our Patreon. And as I mentioned, we do have a skin enhancement workflow finished, so if you'd be interested in that and having an enhancer alternative, definitely consider subscribing and giving us a follow on the Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching. That is it for today. I will see you next time.